Hi guys, so my Warhammer 40k chess set is coming along really nicely and obviously in this video I'm going to be doing the um, the, well, the, the knight equivalent and those lovely guys over at Glasshouse recently sent me the Squig Hog boys which is pretty cool because they are going to be well my knight equivalents. There is a link in the description guys so go check out Glasshammer Gaming they do the full range of games workshop figures all the sort of sets there as well as a whole variety of other sort of bits and pieces. They also do a lot of discounts if you become an elite member. So yeah, go check that out as well. And they also have tons of uh, tournaments there. And lots of tables that you can go along and, well, join in. So if you're in the Telford area, definitely go and check them out, guys. So I was very excited when this turned up. As obviously it means I'm another step closer to making my Warhammer 40k chess set. So there's these instructions in here. Pretty simple, these little figures. Um, there's only like a few parts to each squig and a few parts to the riders, which is pretty cool. So Glasshammer also sent me um, another orc figure. Um, I'm going to give that a surprise because that will be coming up in a future video. So these seem the perfect figure to use as the, uh, the knight equivalents. Um, as obviously there's going to be a figure riding on the back of something. Uh, these aren't quite obviously horses. These are definitely more, well, more like pig looking things, I guess, if, if anything. Uh, yeah, usual thing, obviously cut them off the sprues and then tidy up, cleaning up uh, any of the mould lines or any of the uh, the bits where they were attached to the sprue. Uh, there wasn't a lot of cleaning up to do, so it wasn't too bad. Uh, so I cleaned up a little bit and then obviously glued the bits together and then had to go at um, some sort of more cleaning up afterwards. But yeah, so these guys are quite big, uh, but fortunately the bases that I've put all the kings and the queens and obviously the, uh, the more important of the chess pieces um, I put them on quite large bases just because I wasn't too sure how big some of the other figures were. Uh, it's like obviously I've still got the castles to do. I have got an idea of which orc figures I want to use for that. And again, I know them ones are going to be definitely on the larger size. Uh, but having the, the 40mm bases definitely sort of accommodates, well, all the sizes of all the figures. So it's really coming along nicely. Um, obviously, I haven't even started the Space Marine side yet as I kind of really wanted to concentrate on making sure I got all the orcs um, assembled and done, all painted to the same sort of scheme, um, and yeah, looking good. So as you can see, this is my first time putting some squigs together, and yeah, I'm really good at it, as you can tell. I'm not cack-handed at all, or trying to put pieces in the wrong way around. Um, yeah, as you can see, I am a natural pro, and everything fits together first time. <laughs> Um, but yes, yeah, so I've obviously never used these figures before or seen these figures before. So yeah, took a little bit of uh, fumbling around there to get them done. So yeah, it went together really well. Um, no, not too bad on the old seam lines. But again, just a little bit of smoothing just to help join and sort of hide them in together. So you can't see them. Uh, although, to be honest, when I come to paint it, then I do sort of manage to find other seam lines that I, uh, I possibly missed at the beginning. But uh, hey ho. So yeah, this, this set obviously comes with three sort of normal size squigs uh, and then a huge squig for obviously the war boss. Uh, I've gone for the two smaller squigs uh, just because I prefer the sort of look and size of them. And as you can see, I'm going for these little heads just because I love the fact they look like, um, well, look like little army guys. And I think they look good on top of uh, or on the back of a squig. So obviously we've got two, uh, definitely a little bit different. One's obviously got a tire at the back. Uh, but again, these ones seem to take up less sort of room. The uh, the big boss squig, which I will be painting at some stage, he was just a bit too uh, too big. Um, and he might interfere with the other sort of figures when they're all on the chest set. So I think you know what I'm doing here, guys. Yes, I'm going to say, I know a lot of people don't like it, but I don't care. I'm doing the slap chop method. Uh, I mean, it's going to be called Aunt Fanny Bucket, whatever method, um, and I would still love it. Yeah, for me, it's it's a game changer. It's changed me from not liking painting to absolutely loving painting, loving the results I'm getting. Uh, and yeah, just enjoying this side of the hobby um, a lot more than I kind of ever would before. So if you're new or new to it, which well, you may be, uh, prime the miniature in black. Then I go over and do uh, a dry brush in a grey. And as you can see now, I'm doing a dry brush in white. So this basically gives us all the other uh, highlights, uh, which are going to be underneath when we come to do the painting stage. But obviously, as we are using contrast paints, they are very translucent. 
uh, translucent even. I'll get my teeth in. Um, so yeah, so you can sort of see the highlights and the bits and pieces I'm doing underneath. It does look like there's a lot of white on there, but when this dries, it does dry obviously a bit lighter. Um, and yeah, as you can see, it comes out looking good. So I'm using my usual uh, go-to technique or color scheme for painting the orcs. Uh, mainly because obviously, I, well, one, I love the look of these colors. Uh, and two, obviously the chest set, I want all the figures to, uh, well, look like they're from the same clan. So using the Plague Bearers uh, Flesh Contrast Paint uh, from Citadel works really well. Certainly my favorite and my go-to green in, uh, well, in all my orcs. Well, I am running low. So guys, if there's anyone out there who works at Citadel or knows anyone who works at Citadel uh, or even works at the sort of local hobby shop, if you want to send me a paint of Plague Bearers Flesh, that would be awesome. And you'd certainly get mentioned in well in any video that I use it. So yeah, with the squigs, um, I had a little look online like I normally do for sort of color, sort of patterns, schemes, or what other people have painted theirs. Uh, and yeah, there's obviously a whole variety of colors out there. Uh, this is gonna be more sort of the reddish brown looking, but certainly have seen a few other well weird and wonderful colors. And I've, I've used this orange. It's a dip in the ink from Green Stuff World. Uh, it's one of my favorite sort of colors to use, mainly because it seems to have a lot of colors within it. It does go on really wet though, so you do have to be careful that it doesn't sort of drip all over the shop. Uh, and once it's dried, I then normally give it two coats, just because you get a whole variety of, um, well, a whole variety of shades from like the orange through to brown, which I think just looks amazing. What I will do at the end of uh, obviously me painting these figures, I'm going to put a little list up and show all the other uh, paints that I used, just in case you wanted to sort of do yours, well, in the same sort of color scheme. Um, this, is, this is the same sort of colors that I use on all my uh, all my orcs I've been doing, um, especially with the uh, with the chest set. But yeah, really loving how this is coming out. Um, so I will be starting on the Space Marines fairly soon, I would hope. Uh, but as a lot of you guys know, I do sort of generally have quite a few sort of projects on the go at once. And if you're a patron, you'll have seen the uh, well the, the current recent behind the scenes pictures that I post. I try and post every sort of few days, just giving updates on what I'm currently working on. So yeah, big shout out and thank you to all my uh, my current patrons for helping sort of support the channel, as well as my sponsors, Easy World of Dice and Any Cubic. Um, yeah, if without your guys' help, I probably wouldn't be able to make as many videos as I do. So yeah, definitely much appreciated, guys. And if you want to become a, a patron, there's a link at the end of the video, as well as a down in the description. I say it's just a few quid a month, uh, but it really helps sort of go towards funding the channel and you get to see well, behind the scenes stuff of what I'm currently working on. So yes, yeah, so this is where I'm giving this guy a second coat. Uh, I say this stuff really does go on very wet, um, but I kind of love it because it really just gets into all the nooks and crannies. And then when it dries, it does seem to dry in a variety of shades of orange um, from orange to well, kind of like a brownie color. Uh, all depending on what parts of the uh, the underbrushing you can sort of see coming through. So yeah, usual sort of thing. There are some paints that I don't um, have that are like contrast paints. So these are just obviously the solid paints, and generally that is the uh, the silver and copper that I use. I do also have a, a cream that I use as well, um, mainly because I don't seem to have any good sort of contrast, sort of light cream sort of colours. Um, but hopefully I will soon, because obviously Army Painter are going to be releasing, or they're currently in the works, of making up 90. Uh, yeah, that's right, 9090 different speed paints. Uh, which, well, I, I, to say I'm excited about would be an understatement, uh, because obviously my, my go-to paints now are uh, the contrast speed paints, because I just love them. So yeah, so when I get this full range of 90 out, uh, I am going to be one happy chappy. So the bits that didn't uh, or aren't obviously contrast paints, they look too nice and neat and clean. So that's why I go over with a nice soft tone uh, brown wash. Uh, just because obviously this dirties things up, adds a little bit of shadow to everything and just helps tie it all in with how, well, with how the rest of it looks. And this is always my last sort of process in the, uh, the painting stage. And yeah, really pleased with how these come out. Uh, and they look great on the board with obviously all the other sort of orc chess pieces I've currently got. So obviously these go on some nice clear bases. I get these bases from Fluid 3D Workshop. There's a link in the description, guys, because that's where I get all my uh, my bases from. Uh, obviously these ones are a little bit different because I've drawn a hole and put a magnet in, just because obviously all my uh, my chess pieces are magnetized 
and well they attach to the board nicely and won't fall off and yeah just a simple case of gluing the little suckers down obviously this um, squig's meant to be uh, well more on his feet but i preferred the angle like this because obviously it looks more like the angle of the other one and it takes up a bit less room sort of protruding over the other uh, base and yeah there we go these guys are now ready to join my other ones so as you can see i've got the uh, the king the queen all the pawns and now the knights done all i've got left to do now is the uh, the bishops and the castles i've already got an idea of what i'm going to use for those i just need to uh, well buy them or convince some lovely uh, <laughs> lovely workshop or game shop even to uh, possibly send me some and there you go guys hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to, uh, to give it a thumbs up, leave some comments down below, and if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, and turn on the bell, as I do produce several videos every week. Okay, that's it. Take care. Bye for now.